the way Don Hogg and the ganja, you think a bomb was a roster. Don it with mobsters, all kinds of lasagnas and pastas. I bloodline from my mama, the other you find in my papa. Keep my phone sway in my mind and line with my chakras. The posers are so bogus, I'm colder than snow blowers. A older motherfucker this bolder than old, old as hit you. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. There's a lot of outrage in the news. Some social media influencers have took to boycotting the Olympics because of the blasphemous ceremony and the mockery depicting the Last Supper. I don't approve of that. You've got the Algerian boxer, Amani Khalif, and Lin Yu Ting, a Taiwanese boxer, who have both failed biochemical tests and were barred from competing in the World Championships last year as they had XY chromosomes. Amane beat Angel Kalina from Italy yesterday in the Olympics. Lin Yu Ting is still yet to fight, and it's caused an uproar. They're also letting a volleyball player, Steven Van Velde from Holland, 29 years of age, who raped, just in case, who raped a 12-year-old in the UK in 2014. The Netherlands have seen fit for him to compete in their volleyball team. And he's in Paris playing volleyball in the Olympics. It's a lot to digest. It's a lot to digest. You know, like, um, I still haven't seen Delicious Ori, the British super heavyweight. Apparently, he lost a split decision in the first round of the super heavyweight tournament. And a few boxers have lost via split decision from Britain. So it's not looking good for old Blighty on the trail for medals. It is what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of uproar. And no, I don't approve of the disrespect of the saviour Jesus Christ. I don't approve that. I don't approve of XY chromosome males beating on women. And it's not just boxing. They're in other sports in the Olympics, taking medals away from girls who have worked really hard to get their spot. I don't approve of this rapist being selected to represent his country. You could say he's paid his debt. I'm just not comfortable with it. I can't say too much, because I don't want to get the channel cancelled out, but it just seems a little coincidental that you've got all these controversial news stories in one Olympics. It's unprecedented. Scratching my head, though. The International Boxing Association, who represented amateur boxing up until this year, have been stripped by the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. And they were outvoted... Unanimously, was it 69 to 1? A few people didn't take up the vote. So, okay, corruption, get rid of them. And now boxing is in the balance for the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. As a result, they're trying to get this US boxing to replace the IBA. They've got a deadline until early next year to get that sorted. And of course, the International Olympic Committee are outraged by the corruption, financial and ethical issues. And while, yeah, there's a lot of corruption there, there always has been, we've known that. But it says here, the International Olympic Committee are backing these transgender athletes, even though they failed these biochemical tests. They're backing them to go and beat up women, as I know women, with one chromosome. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is how the International Olympic Committee are any less bankrupt in their morality than the IBA. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Yeah, man. Looking back at the Olympic final, 2016, Joyce versus Yoka. Both of them turned pro to a lot of fanfare. Yoka was being trained by Virgil Hunter. And Yoka, I don't know if his popularity is on the same level as it was back then. He was very popular in France. But after a couple of back-to-back -back losses to Martin Bacoli and Carlos Takam, in fact, three back-to-back -back losses, he lost to Riyad Meri who he was fancied to beat as well. And not really impressing as a pro, Yoko appeared to be on the scrap heap. Weekend gone, he resurfaced at the Tolworth Recreation Centre, London, quite anonymously on a Dean White card, taking on a 15-8 and eight journeyman from Belgium. Thankfully, Yoko didn't lose. He got a fourth-round stoppage. Around that same time, Joe lost to Derek Chisora in a minor upset. I just listened to Dean's interview and he's talking about a possible meeting of Yoka versus Joyce revisiting that fight. I would argue Joe's had a better career. But at the same time, both of them are in very transitional periods in their careers.
Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. 23rd of November, Las Vegas, AFL TV announced that Tank Davis will be taking on Shakur Stevenson unification. Only for Shakur Stevenson to reply, this is fake. Tank Davis, he said it was cap also. No fight, right? Team Davis said they sent a contract or they're sending a contract. Shakur hasn't received this contract. One of Javante's coaches, Kenny Ellis, said the only way the fight don't happen is if Stevenson is scared. It's definitely going to happen. But this is what Coach Calvin, Tank's chief second, said last week. See, I'm like this. I don't like the Shakur fight unless they deal with the negotiator. It's not because they said nobody's scared of nobody in this game. Let's get that straight. The fighter's going to fight. We have to save the fighters from there and look at certain things. You need two fighters to engage. Shakur already sit there and say, I'm going to fight my fight. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? It's my job to crack that goddamn safe. You need two fighters to engage. You also need two fighters to sign the blood clot contract, Calvin. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Jack Cattrall apologies to Regis Prograce for the pullout. Is what it says here. Regis will be pissed. Jack is supposedly injured. They were not specific about what the injury was. They were supposed to fight at this new co-op arena in Manchester, which is a 23.5 thousand capacity arena. Now, depending on how much of the arena they were going to use, and Jack Cattrall doesn't have the reputation of being a big ticket seller over here. I'm in two minds whether the injury is legit or they've cancelled it because they just can't sell the tickets. And, you know, some reports say the fight is cancelled, which means kaputs. And some are saying postponed. They're trying to work out a new date. Maybe a new date and a new venue with less seats. And perhaps a cheaper opponent to pay than Regis. The Ring magazine have said October. It's being pushed back, postponed until October. The question is, is does Regis wait around for... Jack, 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 Jack. Until October or ask Eddie to get him a new opponent. If I was him, I'd get a new opponent. He's getting on as well. You know what I mean? Uh, Jack's talking about his health comes first. He won't be rushed. And as the Ring magazine said, it's just another delay in Jack's career. In his uninteresting career. And I like Jack Carroll. But I'm just keeping it real. Aside from the controversial first Josh Taylor fight, his career is dry. The O'Hara Davis fight was dry. Now hopefully he's not going through a phase where he starts getting injured a lot as he gets older. Still has another world title shot waiting around for Josh Taylor. I always complained about it. You guys always heard me saying, don't wait around for Josh. Move on. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. Okay, so it was Santa Monica Pier in LA where they held the grand arrivals. They look live, man. Look like a good party. You know what I mean? Top rank. Had Eddie Hearn hosting the party. You know what I mean? Eddie was breaking down the fights. Eddie said that Jared Anderson versus Martin Bacoli is a 50-50 fight. Jared didn't take too kindly to that. Him and Eddie had words. Told Eddie to put his money up if it's a 50-50. Jared very animated on the stage. Face to face with Bacoli. who told the reporter, I'm here for business. He's not here to play. He's not here to enjoy the sunny weather or any of that. But somebody on Twitter saw something I saw. When Jared started dancing in front of Bacoli after the face-off, I feel some of the energy is fake energy. I do. I do. Not saying he's going to lose, but I feel he's not as confident as what he tries to give off. The dancing, the bling, etc, etc. I'm still picking him to win, tentatively. I don't think he's got good boxing skills like that. I feel he has to box and punch with Bacoli. He's the younger dude. He's still in his mid-twenties. We don't know how old Bacoli is. Anyone seen a legit birth certificate? He's not fast on his feet. And all Jared, in my opinion, has to do is implement some foot movement and it will make it a lot easier. I'm not saying that gets him the win alone, but it will make it a lot easier for him. I have it a 50-50, but I'm going to pick Anderson because I, I, I just can't believe he's American's brightest hope and he's going to get brushed away by Bacoli. I have to believe that whatever Michael Hunter did to Bacoli, Jared Anderson can do it. They bought in Sugar Hill for Jared. Trying to get some of that Tyson Fury factor, I guess. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. 
Now we go from Jared Baby Anderson to Jarrell Baby Miller against Andy Ruiz. This one, it should be straightforward. Andy Ruiz is a good counter puncher. He's a bit more cuter in the pocket than Danny Dubois. We will just walk in and look to thud his jab or swing a power punch while Andy picks his punches with a little more sophistication. Andy has the better hand skills. I don't know if Jarrell Miller's fat camp, which is what it's been, has served him as much as he would have hoped. We'll see. Like I said, it should be straightforward. Andy Ruiz wins late stoppage or points. More likely points. But that timeout that Andy's had away from the ring, two years out. Now, is that down to him or is it down to the PBC not getting him the fight dates? Two years out. And he didn't look that good against Luis Ortiz. He decked him a couple of times. If he put his foot on the gas, he would have got him out of there. But ever since Chris Ariola floored him and took him the distance, he's looked reluctant to take fights. I don't know if he's living too good off that money he's made. And I don't know if he's doing a wilder. You know, Saudi's put up a bag and now he's lured out of his hiding place to fight because of the Saudi bag. Will Andy become a casualty of the Saudi bag? And Jarrell Miller guts him like a rainbow trout. Let's hope old nut job Miller doesn't pop. Yeah? Let's hope he doesn't pop. His, his inactivity was between 2018 2022. When he popped for the title challenge against unified champion Anthony Joshua. Served his suspension. Signed to top rank. Was about to have his debut on top rank. And then he popped again. So that kept him out of the ring for four years. Andy Ruiz's inactivity. Stopping Anthony Joshua 2019. And then losing to Joshua on points later on in the year. Since then he's had a total of two fights man. Two fights. Chris Ariola put Andy on the canvas for the first time. Andy lost a whole load of weight for that fight. Some theorize that Andy's used to fighting fat. And losing all that weight is the reason he got decked and looked sloppy in there. And as wacky as that sounds, even I'm thinking, oh no. I think that fight took a lot of confidence from Andy. That was a year and a half after Joshua avenged the loss to Andy. Andy's got a lot of psychological issues. Yeah? That's one reason I'm tentative to pick him. That's one reason. That and the inactivity. Then 2022, he had the fight with Luis Ortiz, decked Ortiz twice, Laboured a little and won a UD. Let Ortiz get back into it a little. Wasn't that impressive? And I have my doubts he's improved since then. I could see a scenario where Miller outworks Andy. If he's prepared to take that mid-range combination power from Andy. If he's prepared to take that and walk through it. I could see Andy potentially losing a points decision. But at the same time... Jarrell don't have the same talent Andy does. So, it's a bit of a cop-out. But one thing I've learned is them inactive fighters, think about it before you back them. Think about it. This one, I'm going to sit back and watch. Stay neutral on the pick. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. It will be difficult for Israel Madrimov to keep his belt on Saturday. From my opinion, most he can hope for is to be competitive. There's nothing that leaps out that suggests he's got the extra dimensions to beat Crawford. Good fundamentals, nice high guard, which is all good. But Bud will more than likely use the six inch reach advantage to win the duel of the jabs early, then bring his extra weapons into play. And unlike Madrimov's last opponent, who he fought for the vacant WBA title, you won't see Bud holding his left hand nearby his thigh when he's in punching range to get whacked with right hands. A lot of people say that Madrimov's physical strength could be an issue for Bud. And it could be, and I think it will be. I think it will be an issue. Madrimov will want to put Terence Crawford on the back foot. Put the smaller man in his place. Crawford will not be happy with just being pinned on his back foot for the fight. Neither one is going to want to be the hunted. But defense will come into play. Like Crawford's combinations of the jab. You don't see where the punches are coming. Does Madrimov have the static defense so he can stay in the range and counter? Or what's he like on the back foot? These are key questions which could decide the fight.
And if Madrimov has enough power to make Crawford respectful, because Crawford is good at catching shots, catching shots and countering. He'd done it brilliantly against Errol Spence. But then again, Spence was even no match for Crawford or he was washed. Madrimov is physically strong, but he's not a huge puncher. He's not a huge puncher. Kurbanov aside, his recent fights have he stepped up. A lot of the fights have gone 10 rounds. Crawford's killed his last 9 or 10, albeit at a lower weight. Will he try to box with Crawford? Will that be a mistake? Crawford vastly more experienced as a pro. 11 fights. Madrimov has a lot of questions that need to be answered. Can he take a punch? He looks like he can. He looks a big, strong lad. I haven't seen much slippage in Terrence Crawford. But, you know, he's in his late 30s and he's at a new weight. If he decides to sit on the ropes, needing a rest, that could be one window of opportunity for Madrimov. And he is a good body puncher. I do expect him to give Crawford some issues in the trench. I do. Crawford's my favourite fighter, so I don't want to come off too biased. Like, Madrimov has done well to win his belt. You could question Kurbanov's credibility. I saw Leo Smith go over to Russia and was unlucky not to get that verdict against Kurbanov. Crawford, a landslide points victory is what I'm going to go for here. Or maybe a little more tighter than that. We'll see. Could be a chess match, which I don't think favours Madrimov. The way Don Hogg and the Ganja, you think a bomb was a roster. Don it with mobsters, all kinds of lasagnas and pastas. I bloodline from my mama, the other you find in my papa. Keep my phone sway in my mind in line with my chakras. Got posers are so bogus, I'm colder than snow blowers. A older motherfucker that's bolder than old Otis. You whacking, I refuse to pretend that I don't know this. Nice and toasted, so focused. Kind of like a sniper scope is my flow's dope is. I'll show you what a choke hold is. You can't out quote us, out jokers are out smoke. <laughs> Dumb calamities, what I actually brought is tragedies Like the hell I hit with Michael Phelps, lung capacity if it's past to me Make niggas want to approach mad at me Cause one hit turned the blunt to a roach But yo, I don't give a damn, no, nope. I don't give a fuck nope. Only one life to live it, nigga, I'ma live it up, what? I'm no magician, but I'm magic making. In the booth, gravitating to the track that's playing. Got me in the deepest part of my brain navigating. For the right lines, what you might find is fascinating. Oh, it's true, I'm an older dude, and I'm focusing vocally, open to overly spew and overdo an ocean flowing of polar booze that I wrote for you. So let me quote a few from these multiple poets who live in my skull, producing every word that I spoke to you. I'm hoping you get it, they say I'm crazy. I need to be admitted, I spit it. The best that ever did it, admit it, I shit it On any critic that didn't agree with it Committed to the craft, till I'm in the dirt, dig it That means I never quit it, beat the case, get acquitted I never give it up, I live it till it's at least seven to eight digits in my bank account Bitches, now that's business oh. Okay Kill him, ill precision, with skill and perfect vision, I play all positions. My pen on point, accurate, but still my pen deal and spill lead on accident. Illa ink, iron shots for the anemic, y'all throw it up, we eating, y'all bulimic. Might lose my mind, but never my mic. And for murder in the music, I'm doing 25 to life. Chief of pathological, microphone blazer that'll clobber you. And kill all your dreams with one verse, I demolish you. Ill 16s off the dome, and yeah, I got a few. And I'm soon to be the king on the throne, and y'all ain't got a clue. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a fool. Not a dude to sleep on. Stay alert, niggas, I got a lot of moves. Still in my prime, I got a lot to prove. So every time I breathe in a cypher, I literally beat the shit out of you.